Hello and welcome to Hard Light Vedic Astrology. Um, I was just going to go through quickly. Um, this morning there was an attack on Israel. Um, and so I just looked, I was looking at the astrology and I thought I just put together a couple slides um, really fast just to show you uh, what the astrology was behind that. So uh, yeah, let's look at it. So uh, what we have on the left here is the National Birth Chart of Israel. And again, this is all from a Vedic astrology or a Jochish perspective, so um, ancient Indian astrology. But on the left here, we have the National Chart of Israel. And on the right, we have the time of attack. So the data I used for the Birth Chart of Israel is 14th of May, 1948, 16.32 p.m. Jerusalem, Israel. And the Desha um, of that time, or the planetary period at that time, was Rahu, Rahu, Saturn, Saturn. So if we look at the time of attack, the data that was used there was today, um, 7th of October, 2023, 6.30 a.m. in Jerusalem, Israel. And the Desha, or planetary period at that time, was Jupiter, AT, Saturn, Saturn. All right, so again, uh, if you watch my videos at all, you know I can go on for hours talking about astrology, but um, this seemed pretty straightforward here. So the main thing to note is that if you look at the birth chart of Israel here on the upper left, um, the rising sign, this is the top square or diamond here, that's the rising sign, ascendant, lugna, those are all different names for the same thing. Um, it's the seventh constellation or Libra, lugna, Libra, rising sign. And you can see we have K2, the south node of the moon here that I've circled in dark uh, gray. Um, what's interesting already is that if you look to the right, um, the moment of attack this morning was also Libra. Because you can see the little seven is circled here. So that's significant. And the other thing is K2 is currently in Libra. So Israel at this time, astrologically, um, um, is recreating their K2 placement, their south node of the moon placement in, in their birth chart. Okay. And as you can see in the time of attack, K2, uh, if we look at the Desha period, K2 is a sub-period. So K2 is active uh, today for Israel. Um, uh, again, the, the, if we look, go back to the Israel chart, the current Desha planetary period, um, we're looking at Rahu, Rahu, Saturn, Saturn. So those are going to be the two uh biggest um uh most influential planets um at the time of the birth of israel as a nation and so i circled rahu here um saturn is in the 10th house and you can see by this dark blue arrow saturn in the national chart of israel aspects rahu and um uh, jupiter is also important jupiter is in the third house of israel uh, the National Chart of Israel, and you can see this yellow arrow, um, Jupiter's aspecting its energy also onto Rahu. Okay, now this is the thing, is if we look over at the time of attack, we can see that Jupiter is with Rahu in the seventh house. So Rahu is in the same place, Jupiterian energy is, in the, in, is on Rahu, and if we look at the fifth house on the time of attack, we have a retrograde um, Saturn in its own sign Aquarius also aspecting its energy onto the seventh house. So not only is Israel at the moment um, recreating its uh, first house rising sign ascendant Lugna, but it's also recreating its seventh house of independent business and relationships. So that's uh, pretty phenomenal right there. And uh, if we're talking about transits, if we go back to the time of attack chart on the upper right, what I've circled in this bright red circle here is the ascendant at the time of attack was just at one, um, it wasn't even a degree, one minute. It had just changed um, uh, rising signs. Um, and so just the fact that we're just one minute into this rising sign makes this whole chart very unstable. Okay, and then we have K2 here at 1 degree 14 minutes and Mars at 2 degrees 27 minutes. Mars in the last two days has just crossed uh, K2. Mars is a very fiery uh, energy planet. Um, it can be very violent when it's imbalanced. Um, it's all about initiative and uh, bravado and uh, courage and force, uh, typically, if it's not balanced. And K2 has a very similar energy to uh, Mars 
except that it has an additional twist to it. It's usually um, kind of Mars, but even more erratic, even more unexpected, even more hidden. And Mars as a planet symbolizes enemies. Um, and uh, not only did Mars cross K2 in the last couple of days, so those energies were clashing, so making them even more violent, even more explosive, but Mars at this time, um, at this current uh, time, is actually combust, or asta in Sanskrit. So combustion means that Mars is actually very close to the sun, so close to the sun, in fact, that it's actually eclipsed because when a planet gets, a true planet gets too close to the sun, you can't see it. So essentially you can't see Mars, you can't see your enemies. And that's essentially what happened um, this morning is that nobody saw this coming. Um, um, it was a surprise to, I think, Israel as well as the rest of the world. Um, and part of that gets down to the Saturn here. Again, if we're looking at the time of attack chart on the right, um, if you look in the fifth house here, uh, Saturn is retrograde. Uh, in its own sign, super, super strong Saturn. This is the strongest planet in the in the time, at this moment of time, um, if we're looking at this uh, attack moment. And it is aspecting or shining its light, its energy onto the seventh house of relationships. And Saturn is currently in a nakshatra or lunar mansion called Chattabisha, which uh, translates in San from Sanskrit as a hundred healers. Um, so Saturn being this strong in the fifth house, the fifth house is related to, um, advice, counseling, um, and Aquarius is, um, this kind of Saturn, this kind of strong Saturn in Aquarius is, I always kind of think of NASA scientists. Um, and so you get NASA scientists consulting, but Saturn, when it aspects its, um, energy into the seventh house here, the seventh house is ruled by Aries and Saturn, Saturnian energy is destabilizing energy. Saturn is debilitated in Aries. So you have this destabilized, um, kind of engineer consulting energy, um, affecting, um, relationships here. So it looks like, um, again, the surveillance system failed. And that's part of why this happened today, if um, Israel um, had a chance at all of um, protecting themselves from this, unfortunately, from the devastation of the people and the land. Um, and that's not a political statement at all. Um, it's just uh, I'm a pacifist um, and, you know, whenever somebody gets hurt, um, uh, it doesn't, it's, it's not a happy time for me. So anyway, um, again, I'm just trying to stick with the astrology here rather than the politics. So you can see essentially what's happened at this moment of time, Mars crossing K2 and being combust. You had this explosion happening in the first house. The first house um, represents the physical body of somebody or some place, since we're looking at a place here. Um, and that's essentially what happened. Um, uh, uh, also, I have uh, the bottom here. This is the D9, the subzodiac or Amsha of the moment of attack. Um, the D9 represents relationships, and um, this just confirms really everything. So even in the sub-zodiac here, you can see that little seven is circled in kind of a dark red color. Um, so even the sub-zodiac or sub-chart on relationships is also a Lib uh, Libra rising. So that makes it even more, the, that sub-chart even more significant. And look, you have Mars and K2 recreated in the uh, rising sign of the D9. So it's just this, this whole energy, this, this violent, uh, you know, destructive, un, un, just, you know, hit out of the blue, not seeing your enemies coming, it's recreated in the D9. Um, and if we look at the planets from the Desha planetary period of the attack time, so again, if we're looking at Jupiter, K2, Saturn, Saturn, and we apply, we look at where those planets are in the D9, uh, we have um, K2 in the rising sign with Mars, which I just mentioned. Jupiter, um, the main Desha, the Maha Desha, that's in the 12th house of loss and expense and um, foreigners and hidden enemies. So it's all the same energy. And then where Saturn, Saturn's in the third house. Um, the third house is a negative house as well. And when we have a, a planetary uh a planet that's currently being run by its Desha um, sequence in um, the third house or the eighth house, that means that indicates also not just a, a kind of a negative situation, but that there's going to be a change or ending. So um, 
yeah, basically all three of these charts are almost exactly the same. So that's what happened this morning astrologically. So anyway, I just thought, um, again, I'd, I'd put a couple slides together um, quick so that you, it, for anybody who's interested in the astrology, they could see what happened today. Um, so anyway, um, um, it's a heavy energy, so sorry for that. But, um, you know, again, when things like this happen uh, with the astrology, you can see how things line up. And it was really astrologically a perfect storm, unfortunately, for Israel. Um, so, yeah. So until the next uh, time, and hopefully <laughs> the next time will um, be a happier occasion um, and, and happier things to discuss. All right. So at least I hope you found this uh, interesting, if not helpful, in terms of learning astrology and how um, the transits and things, you know, can um, deeply affect our lives, all of us. All right. So take care. Keep your chins up and uh, I'll, I'll see you again. Namaste.